Okay. And welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today is a very special day for me because uh, it's Fun Day Monday. Let's call it like that. Fun Day Monday. It's a funny day because it's the, the start of the week. Since I no longer work uh, at an actual office, it's going to be a little hard for me to uh, get used to, get early, and get dressed, get a shower. Uh, I've been out for around three hours now. Um, I, uh, I began watching myself decay more and more into the slop, and I decided to get back to my uh, regular schedule. So when I was attending um, an actual office, I was uh, getting up, waking up at 5 a.m. By 5, by 6 a.m. I was already uh, done some exercise. I already uh, brew some coffee. I do have something, uh, some coffee here still. And I get, and I get to play a little bit before leaving to work, leaving off to work. In my case now, I'm going to be working here at home, and I've been studying a lot of. Uh, I mentioned a book on, on the last episode, so I may like to show it to you. Let me see. I don't remember what I left it. Uh, never mind. Is uh, the the name of the book is um, Head First Object Oriented Design. Um, and I've been reading the book uh, through chapter one. I am still haven't finished the first chapter, and I really like it a lot. It's a very interactive book in the sense that uh, I am required to take notes. And I am required to actually think about them. Uh, let me show you something. Uh, let me see. If you're watching me, I'm recording this um, video on YouTube. I'm going to be uploading this today. The podcast is going to be released a little earlier. Um, I've been offline for a little bit because of... Uh, I now I do have my wife living here on, with me, so and and seems like it's going to be a long term uh, thing now that she's here on my city. Um, so okay, enough about that. Let me get this book right away. Uh, Head first, object oriented analysis and design. That's the name of the book. And let's change it up. Uh, let's make a transition here so you can actually see it. And there we go. So this is the book. Uh, this is the page 32 where I am currently at. Um, it's a very interesting book. It's making, as you can see, um, it's making use of uh, some UML um graph here represent representing classes um and some source code here down here um the special thing about this book is that even though in it should be um the knowledge that you get on this book should be able to be applied or implemented on c sharp c plus plus um and any other programming language that uses the object-oriented paradigm. However, on this book in particular, I see that all the code is on Java. Uh, and no wonder, uh, Java is basically the reason why people actually tries to learn uh, object-oriented design in the first place. So I guess it makes sense. And it's one, if not the most used object-oriented programming language out there. So what I'm going to be doing today is uh, uh, I'm going to be, well, before talking about what I'm going to be doing today, let's talk about this book. So far, um, it's been interesting. As you can see, it's very, uh, it's very well, 
you can let's make it a little bigger here if you're watching this on youtube um what i'm showing here for the one uh, if you are listening to this on the podcast is basically one of page 31 of the book and as you may uh, and basically here um i am listing what i mean in the book it's been listed the three steps that you need to have a well-designed app so the first step on this book is basically make sure your software does what the customer wants it to do so basically we before we even start designing and implemented and implementing object-oriented analysis and design and making changes on the actual architecture of the software the actual first thing what we need to do is that is for us to make sure that the app before anything else we need to make sure that the app or the program actually does what is required to do so this is the first step and on the on the book is argued that why not just skip <coughs> if the changes are going to be deep anyway why don't we just um <coughs> jump into design patterns uh why don't we just jump into object oriented implementation uh principles you know all that uh well the book answers that question by basically telling you that if you have a process that is similar or even better it's good for you yet on this book um, they are showing you a path to follow which is basically an easier one Um, it's going to be very easy so the first step is basically make sure your software does what the customer wants it to do so uh, on the previous pages um, we begin by basically replicating the base the basic function of the app and on the example code here is a very basic command line uh, program because learning purposes of course and we basically are creating uh, a guitar selling software or a guitar inventory system which is actually able to search for different for different guitars on the inventory and i know the the program is not is not complex it's not sophisticated at all it's basically just uh it's basically just um a full java program with with guitar objects um, inside a collection so it's not a big deal uh, we are not using databases at this point so we don't we don't need to get into sql and, and databases and tables and datasets and all that so it's basically an example program more than enough to basically teach us um, the steps so the first thing that you need to do is basically make sure that your software does what the customer wants it to do and that basically implies that your software may or may not do what the client wants you may think that it does uh, in reality most of the time uh, when when you show what your program does most of the time uh, the client is going to argue that well it uh, it it does it but not how i like it to and you need to interview the product owner in this case and basically get what is not uh, why the program is not doing it right that's basically it and that happens a lot uh, it, it happens to me all the time and it may be a little frustrating and depressing because uh, delivering a finishing uh, a finish uh, feature not let alone a, a finished program uh, in uh, implies a lot of work and sometimes you may think that uh, this kind of comments 
or reviews imply that you need to get rid of all that of all that work and begin from scratch and junior developers find themselves on that dilemma quite a lot may i say uh, on the spot of they need to basically delete everything and start out from the scratch again because basically they just don't have a they just don't have the flexibility on their software to be able to make bigger changes without them to to basically just uh, you know what it's going to be way harder to modify the actual so the, the the actual source code of the app um, to comply with the new requirements i may just you know what i i would rather uh, start from scratch and redo everything so if you find yourself in that position probably your program or your software uh, is not actually flexible enough and you are missing base you are missing the point of object oriented programming if you are doing that probably you are programming um, as a functional programmer uh, which is the way of basically analyzing the requirements at the beginning uh, model and design the program and and implement the program in the end basically coding it and then uh, executing it okay so mm, uh, the first point is this i already finished that and i already working on step number two which is step number two apply basic object oriented principles to add flexibility and that's basically it the entire uh, object oriented paradigm objective is to basically add flexibility to your software and what is flexibility well in f in functional programming uh, you divide your code um, you have two ways to do to do something uh, either your program is a big pile of code a single file with a lot of code and the code does everything that your program needs to do um, and i call that the the obelisk or may i say the uh, how do you say it in english um uh, it's basically uh, it's basically like this pile uh this inflexible rock this gigant uh, like the one um uh, a space odyssey movie is basically um a big pile of code that is very hard to actually change without destroying something so that's the that's the thing that's going to be the main problem there uh object oriented programming uh, approaches approaches the problem differently in the sense that uh, you basically create this system to produce parts and these parts build your program and if you change the factory of these parts you can change the parts themselves and make a very sophisticated software without the need of um, remaking everything so by the same sense it's very powerful and dangerous because um, changes that you may think at first that are very uh, unconsequential in the big scheme of things um, may become really um, really hard to follow in the sense that even the slightest change on, of, on a class on your code that you believe is not going to affect anything uh, may cause bugs and major problems down the line especially if you are sharing your project with uh, a lot of more people so i am on step number two apply basic object oriented principles to add flexibility on this step um i am still reading this step uh, the the last step which i am not still reading uh, is a step number three strive for maintainable reusable design Re um, this step is described as remember we got even more design work to do in this step 
So before you're done, your software is really easy to extend and reuse. And I I am still behind on this step. I am still on step number two. Number two, apply basic object-oriented principles to add flexibility. This is where you look for big problems, especially related to things like duplicate code or bad class design. So I am still working on on the example of the inventory for the guitar store. Um, uh, on the source code, we basically create a, a public class called inventory, which contains a list, um, and we add guitar objects to the list. It does have a search uh, method, which receives a guitar spec um, uh, object, and what is a, a guitar spec object is basically a class, which contains the prop the the common properties of all the guitars on the inventory. So we pass through to the search method uh, a guitar spec object, and we basically begin working with that. So we do have a list of, ma uh, of matching guitars on the source code, which is a, a linked list object, and we use a classic for with an iterator to basically uh, uh, basically run through the linked list and compare every object on the linked list against the guitar spec that we pass as a parameter. And what caused my attention here is that the for syntax, the syntax for the for loop um, is pretty old. Uh, today, I rather use the for each uh, loop, which is easier to read and easier to write, and is uh, e and is easier to understand. So, if you are watching this on YouTube, I am underlining everything with with yellow. So, this line of code reads for open parenthesis iterator y equals to guitars dot iterator open parenthesis closing parenthesis semicolon and the increment is defined as i that's the iterator dot has next method semicolon and closes parenthesis and we open the block of the loop and down here um, immediately we create a local uh, variable of type guitar which is named guitar with the underscore g and we create an assignment that is going to be equals to uh, the the iterator i dot next element and we are going to be casting um, the guitar class on that element so as you can see here all of this casting and all of this iter iterator usage is very old school. I guess that the book is really old, um, at least old in the in the software <laughs> time frame. Uh, you know, software development time frames are very short, and basically six months is old by today's standards. So I wonder how in which in which year has this uh, was this book released? So. Uh, all the information we use in comparing guitars is in guitar spec, not the guitar class. So previously, the guitar class contains all the data referring to uh, what a guitar is, including model, including uh, uh, the brand, including the, the front cover wood and the back cover wood. Uh, you know, basic uh, basic information about a guitar. And we are comparing all those uh, common properties among guitars to the actual guitar spec that we are looking for. Uh, so before watching this code here, um, the guitar class contain all the information. And on a step two, uh, on a step two, which is called uh, apply basic uh, object-oriented principles to add flexibility, on this step, 
we move all those um, common properties uh, for guitars into a new class called guitar spec and guitar spec basically contains all these properties that are common to all guitars on the inventory then on back on the guitar on the guitar class we add a property i mean a field called uh, guitar spec which is of the, of the new class guitar spec so we now have an object inside the guitar class which contains the guitar spec and we are using an object inside an object in this case so we can basically use guitar spec to pass through all the the data the properties of uh, any given guitar maybe and the result should be a list which contains all the matching guitars um, another thing that I see here is in, um, after we assign a guitar spec variable and we get the the actual guitar specs for, from the element um, on on the line I underline right here there is an if statement which basically compares the the properties every single property with uh, with the guitar spec from the list and if it's a matching if 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 this thing doesn't match it runs a continuous statement so uh, for example it reads if space open parenthesis search expect dot get builder and it gets um, this returns a string with the name of the builder of the guitar um, not equals to guitar spec dot get builder open parenthesis close in parenthesis so basically what this if statement does is asking is the if the builder of the guitar uh, i am providing for the search is not equals to the builder of the current guitar on the list then run a continuous statement so when i read this this was the first time uh, i actually see the continuous statement i didn't really know it existed uh, maybe i do uh, remember seeing it on another book about java and but this was years ago so i don't recall it correctly uh, the continuous statement uh, basically what it does is is very similar to the break statement um, the continuous statement uh, when when it's executed it basically returns to the beginning of the block of the current block and ignores the rest of the code below it so basically if the builder is not the same as the builder of the element that i i am actually checking on uh, on the if statement on the list if the builder is not the same as the builder of my search spec then i'm going to get to the get to the beginning of the block and since i am on a loop on a for loop the iterator is going to get to the next element and i'm going to repeat the code i'm going to create a new guitar uh, object i'm going to assign the next element of the of the guitar list uh, to that variable to that uh, variable of type guitar and i'm going to basically compare the guitar spec uh, the guitar spec for the get builder method again so i'm going to compare the next guitar on the list against the the guitar i'm looking for if that is not true then the continuous statement will not run if the continuous statement doesn't run i get to see uh, what comes next in the block the next thing is to create a string variable called uh, name model and it's going to be equals to the search spec dot get the model dot lower to lowercase so i'm getting the model of the search of my search spec and i executing the low to lowercase method to ensure that when i compare the strings 
Uh, I don't have to worry about um, the case, the casing. Um, I mean the, the the case of the string. In the in the case that uh, I am using an upper an uppercase letter at the beginning on my list, and the user is introducing a lowercase only string, so I don't have to yet I don't have to worry about this. And right after that, I get another if, which is asking if the model is not null and the model is not equals to an empty string and the model is not equals to the guitar spec model with lowercase, then continue. So what does this mean is that if the model is null, if the model is an empty string with nothing, and if the model is not equals to the model that, I, that is on the list, uh, then I repeat the thing, uh, everything is canceled with the continue statement, and I get back to the uh, beginning of the loop. And then I begin running the loop again with the next element. So as I see here, the continuous statement is used uh, over and over again uh, with the with the type of the guitar, with the bad wood of the guitar, and with the top wood of the guitar. Um, we see these uh, statements, uh, this if, which contains a continuous statement, and basically the continuous statement uh, functions as a cancellation of all of the entire block and order Java to basically repeat the if statements with a different uh, guitar inside the list. At the end of the block and after all the if statements and continuous statements, we get a matching guitars dot add and we pass through as a parameter the current guitar uh, on the linked list. So basically, I am, ha I am going to be returning a list of matching guitars in the end, because the method search is actually returning a, a list type in the end. I guess that at the time of, this, uh, of the publishing of this book, uh, generics was not a thing. So that's what I, I guess, that's what I guess that this is a list and not an array list with a generic type inside of type guitar. So that's my, my guess in this case. Even, th even though we change our classes a bit, this method still returns a list of guitars that match the client specs. Um, and that was uh, that was the page where I um, I am reading on. Um, I'm getting ready for another test drive. Uh, that's the name of the page. Um, you will need to update the Fine Guitar Tester class to test out all these new changes. Well, this maybe this is actually the main method. So I am actually using the Guitar Spec class in order to test it out. I'm going to continue reading the book. It seems to be really interesting at the moment. Well, that's all for this particular episode. I hope that you enjoyed the video edition of this podcast. And remember to leave a like if you like it, leave a dislike if you dislike it, click uh, subscribe on YouTube, click a notification bell icon if you want to see every single episode here. And tell me what do you think about me releasing a video version of the podcast um, at the same time as the audio version of the podcast. Uh, I'm going to be uh, working here all day on another project, which I'm going to be talking on the next episode. So thank you for coming in and goodbye.